Start clapping now for James Harris. Catawba Brewing, are you ready to laugh? Okay, good. That's all my energy. It's all gone now. Sorry. Man, this is a. Well, thank you so much for coming. Give it up for Model Face Comedy, right? It's great. It's great. I love. I love doing shows. Uh, you know, I know it like doesn't look like like I have like important things to say, right? Like, I feel like I look like the guy who's like randomly selected to do the half court shot at a basketball game. <laughs> I'm just like that seems far, um, but. You're in good hands. Um, I, I work today. Uh, does anyone? I worked at my job. Uh, <laughs> does anyone here have a job? Jobs? <laughs> yes. Right. Sometimes I tell the audience I have a job, and they just like start applauding. Uh, <laughs> I don't, it kind of hurts my feelings, but I get it. You know. Uh, I work at a bookstore. Um, do y'all read? Any readers? Yeah. Yeah, you read. You're smart. You guys are smart. Sometimes I like ask an uh, audience if they read, and like I did that the other day at a bar, and it was just like silence over the crowd. And then one guy in the back, he stood up and he was like, "Booyah!" <laughs> I was like, "You don't read." Yeah. <laughs> he said, "Booyah!" <laughs> Someone who reads would be like guilty as charged. <laughs> Something smart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a fun time. I, I'm an awkward person and, you know, customer service is hard for me. Like, um, the other day I, had, I was on the phone with a customer, I have to be on the phone a lot, and I was getting credit card information. I had to get the expiration date on their credit card, but instead of saying, what's your expiration date on your card, I just said, what's your expiration date? <laughs> and we have like a lot of older customers, you know? <laughs> she was just like, uh, soon? Uh, <laughs> why are you asking me this, you know? Uh, or like the other day, I had a, a weird customer come up to me and she was like, hey, I'm looking for a book. I was wondering if you had it in your store, if you could look it up for me. And I was like, yeah, it's normal. And she's like, but here's what's not normal. I'm uncomfortable saying one of the words in the title of the book. I was like, okay, that's fine. Just say what you're comfortable saying. I'll look it up for you. And she was like, okay, it's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Uh, I look it up, and I'm like, oh, we don't have it. And she goes, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, you lied to me. <laughs> These customers lie to you, you know? But yeah, it's like, the first, it's like the first real job I've ever had. I was very nervous, and like, I feel like I learn, I learn something every day. Like, the other day I learned my boss, he really hates it, when at the bottom of my emails, it says, uh, sent from my PlayStation. <laughs> Apparently you're not supposed to send emails from your PlayStation. I didn't, this is new to me. Um, it's a bad, bad time to be alive, right, everyone? <laughs> we all agree on that. Um, it's bad, this thing happened to me called COVID-19, if you remember that? Um, it happened, and then during COVID-19, I also got broken up with, which is a bad time to get broken up with, right? Did that happen to anyone else? Um, just me. <laughs> oh, great. You know, I, I really like this. Uh, I'm a unique man. Uh, no, it's a, it's a bad time to get broken up with. The things I get sentimental about are like really weird, right? Like the other day I was giving myself like an at-home COVID test. And I was like, we used to do this together. <laughs> you know, pathetic. Um, or like, you know, when you get broken up with, your friends just say really weird stuff to you, you know? Like, my one friend, he came up to me and he was like, hey man, I know you're really sad now, but it's not gonna sink in you've been broken up with until you try to put a fitted sheet on your bed alone for the first time. <laughs> And I was like, that's really weird. It really sunk in I was broken up with when they took all their stuff and left. <laughs> I was like, whoa, something's different, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. It, it's tough too, because like, the person I was living with, my partner, we were living together. We were dating and living together. And you go from dating someone and living with them, you have to find a new roommate, you know, who's just like some dude. 
it's like a tough transition, you know? I still catch myself, like the other day, we were hanging out and he was like, hey man, I'm gonna go to bed. And like, without even realizing it, I was like, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> and he'd be like, I mean, I'll be there in a minute if you ever need me. Right? I'm a good friend, nice guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he bought it. <laughs> I'm, um, do y'all, uh, do y'all remember Valentine's Day? <laughs> Did y'all experience that? Uh, I don't, it's not my favorite holiday, you know? Uh, I don't like it because couples, they feel like they have to make these posts, you know? They do these posts, there's a picture of them together. The caption is always something like, they're like, three years with this ding dong. <laughs> I just wish they did posts like that when they got broken up with too, right? <laughs> the caption is like, no more years with this ding dong. <laughs> I miss my ding dong. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's good. It's everything's fun now. I'm in a I'm in a new relationship, which is going great. It's great, great time. Um, I it's good too because like usually when I'm dating someone, like a few weeks in, the person will turn to me and they'll be like, "So you're kind of a nervous guy, huh?" <laughs> which that's like being like three seasons into that show House and being like. This guy's not like other doctors. <laughs> Something kooky about him. Uh, <laughs> man. The, I'm dating someone who's a lot smarter than me. Uh, have y'all ever dated someone who's smarter than you? Yes? You whooped. You must be a real dummy. <laughs> no, it's me too, man. Uh, it's good. It's a humbling, humbling experience, you know? Like, she'll catch me sometimes, like, a uh, group of people will be like laughing, you know? So I'll start laughing. And then she'll come up and she'll be like, oh, I didn't hear, what are they laughing at? And I have to be like, oh, I didn't hear either. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll be like, oh, so you're just the kind of guy who just laughs when other people are laughing? And I have to be like, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, that's me. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> And like, I don't know, she's, she says I'm smart because I read all these books, you know, books. I work at a bookstore, but she reads too, you know. And I would say the books that she reads are like better than the books I read, you know. Like, I'll ask her what she's reading and she'll be like, oh, is this a book about how we, uh, how we reduce harm in the community and create a better future for generations to come? I'm like, wow, that sounds awesome. And she's like, what are you reading about? And I'm like, well, it's about the last ever wizard. <laughs> He has to find these stones, <laughs> you know, to beat the last ever dragon. It's not like your books, you know. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> Man. It's, um, I turned 29 years old recently. 29. That's a weird age, right, to turn? Your friends, like, my friends came up to me and they were like, James, you're getting kind of old. Do you know if you ever want to have children? And I was like, I don't even know if my dad knows if he wants children. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't asked him, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't like the way people older, older than me talk about my generation, you know? I'm a millennial. Boomers are always saying that we don't vote, you know? Like, millennials don't vote. They're always saying that. Which is like, statistically, maybe we don't vote, you know? but like boomers are way more likely to like leave the mic on in a Zoom call. <laughs> Say something real mean, you know? Uh, I don't know, I, I voted in the last, the last one. Did y'all, yeah, <laughs> president? That's good, I'm glad you did. Uh, it didn't feel good though, you know, I, I made the right decision, I voted for Biden, but it didn't feel good, you know? It kind of felt like I was like playing Mario Kart, but my only two options for characters were like, evil Bowser, right? <laughs> or like a version of Mario who doesn't give Peach enough space, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, of course I have to vote for a weird Mario. I don't feel good about it, you know? <laughs> and then like, Bernie was just like an outline of a guy I hadn't unlocked yet, you know? <laughs> I was like, why can't I click this guy? <laughs> He's who I want. 
I wanted to talk about my, my dad who's here tonight, uh, which is cool. He uh, works for Walt Disney World. I always pause for applause. It never happens. <laughs> he, um, he's Pluto. Did you know? He's not Pluto. He's a travel agent. Travel agent. And sometimes um, dad gets cool perks for Disney World. Recently, me and him, he got us free tickets to go on an immersive Star Wars vacation together. Um, have you ever been on an immersive Star Wars vacation with my dad? No, no you haven't. It's fun. It was a fun time. We, uh, what happened was we got ushered into like a fake spaceship that was really like a Dodge Durango, you know? And then we got driven to like a bigger fake spaceship that was really like an old Fuddruckers or something, you know? And then uh, we got like checked in one by one. Uh, the people working at the fake spaceship, they weren't allowed to like talk normal. Have you ever been to Colonial Williamsburg, right? You know? <laughs> They kind of have to talk stupid. Uh, <laughs> we're like, we were getting checked in, the person working there or the person in front of me, she said, traveler, where are you from? And the person in front of me was like, oh, I'm from Philadelphia. And the person working there had to be like, what is Philadelphia, you know? <laughs> and I was like, next, I was getting excited and she was like, traveler, where are you from? And I was like, oh, I'm from North Carolina. And she was like, oh, so you're racist. <laughs> I was like, how'd you know that? <laughs> Thought we were in space. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love my mom also, my dad and my mom. My mom's also here tonight. Um, I, uh, I love my mom a lot, but sometimes she tells me um, too much information. Like, I'm like, I, I wanted some of that, you know, not all. Uh, like one time I had to get a, a present for my grandmother. I never know what to get my grandmother for Christmas. So this year I just asked my mom, I was like, yo, you know grandma better than I do. What should I get her for Christmas? And she immediately, she was like, well, you know how your grandmother loves bubble bath? And I was like, no. Yeah. It's not really my role, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> imagine I give my grandmother bubble bath. She like unwraps it and she's like, oh, I love bubble bath. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> this is a bad vibe, right? <laughs> it's not me. Y'all are, uh, are wondering why I have all this like natural stage presence, right? Yes. I see you wondering. Um, it's because I, I did um, a lot of school theater in high school. School theater. Did anyone else do that? Anyone? No? It's a fun time. Uh, I will say I wish I had some cool roles to talk about, um, but I always got cast as like a villain for some reason, but never like the main villain. I was always just kind of like a minor douchebag kind of character. <laughs> I always had one line and it was something like, hey boss, fresh meat, you know? <laughs> and then, then I just like watched the rest. Uh, <laughs> Amber, I had one theater director where he, he made us all write backstories for all of our characters, which that's really cool if you're like the lead, um, but if you're like the, the milkman. Uh, <laughs> I was writing things like my father was a milkman. Uh, <laughs> I have 2% in my veins. Uh, <laughs> I would get recognized on campus, but not in like a cool way, you know? Like uh, people would come up to me and be like, hey, I recognize you from somewhere. And I'd be like, well, I'm in the school play, so. And I'd be like, no, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> and I'd be like, well, I also called the science teacher mom by mistake the other day. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, it's you, you're the mom guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was just never, never cool in school, you know? I was never the cool guy. I think a, a big problem I had was I always thought, I always respected the teachers too much, you know? Like, I, I always got in fights with my friends where I'd be like, Miss Goodman doesn't suck, you suck. You know? <laughs> like I was like wearing a wire and like working for the teachers. <laughs> I'd be like, you can't talk about Nurse Humphreys like that. <laughs> and I'd run to her and she'd throw me a hard candy. I'd catch it in my mouth like <laughs> Man. I don't want you guys to go from here thinking that I'm like some nerd though. I <laughs> I also played uh, sports. I played sports. Yeah. <laughs> I was, um, I used to be the sixth man on my basketball team. Do you guys know what that means? It means that I could rebound okay 
and my dad was on the school board. So <laughs> sure. <laughs> Two big things. I kept winning this award called the Most Improved Player Award, which I feel like the whole thing about that award is that you should probably like stop winning it, right? <laughs> I won it like three times. It makes it feel like, like, like on the first day, I couldn't even like work the gym doors. <laughs> I was like, is it a push? Is it a pull? I was like eating the net. They're like, get down from there. <laughs> hey, y'all, I've been James Harrod. I'm going, bye. <laughs>